Hi, I'm Spencer Alger. Uh, I work at Elasticsearch, and I work here in Phoenix with a few other people on a product called Kibana, which is currently uh, a kind of a companion product of Elasticsearch. Does anybody here have experience with Elasticsearch or the Elk Stack? Hands would be awesome. Cool. See some experience with it. Uh, know about Elasticsearch, what it is, what it does. All right. Well, uh, I will kind of skip through some of that information then. I'll, I will go into it, but um, not so much in depth. Uh, I am a JavaScript guy, work on a browser-based analytics thing, which is Kibana. Uh, I'm not an ops person. I've never done ops, and I'm sorry, but I was kind of informed that this is Linux group, and ops is probably a common thing that you guys do. Hopefully, I, can, I don't make a fool of myself, but uh, I will try to tailor this conversation towards the ops type thing. So the history of Elk. Elk, by the way, is Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana. It's an acronym that we use uh, to describe our stack. Um, back before Elk, data fought, which is what these Elks are doing. They're fighting, I guess. So <laughs> history of the Elk stack. Uh, Elasticsearch is the core of the Elk stack. It was a, is a real-time or near real-time search engine that's got really nice REST APIs based on JSON and HTTP, built on top of Lucene, and that scales really nicely and ha is very high performance. Um, the L is for Logstash, which is a log parser enrichment and export and import utility that you can run throughout your cluster and federate all your logs into one location, primarily Elasticsearch these days. And then Kibana is a browser-based front end that connects to Elasticsearch and helps you view all the data that you've pushed into Elasticsearch. So a lot of organizations will put billions of data points into Elasticsearch and you can't really see those with your face or with your eyes, excuse me. And so Kibana helps you visualize them and manipulate them and search through them using the power of Elasticsearch. Uh, they, the, all these products were, were created independently and kind of formed to solve a specific use case that this person needed. But they turned out to work out to get work together really well. So Elasticsearch started hiring key contributors to the projects and bringing them all in-house. Uh, and so now we have Synergy. Um, in 2012, Elasticsearch was founded as a company based on the open source product. Uh, then Rashid, the guy who uh, put together Kibana initially, joined Elasticsearch. Then Jordan, the guy who uh, was responsible for Logstash, joined Elasticsearch. And now all three of these products are developed in-house at Elasticsearch. And somewhere in there, I joined right between those two. Um, so Elasticsearch is supported by a few commercial offerings that I'd like to mention real quick, just quickly. Plugins for security, um, a plugin for monitoring. We also do support and we do training. So that's how we all have jobs to support this open source product. Um, the first thing that you'll do when you want to use the Elk stack is getting set up. Uh, I've seen a couple people who have experience with it. You guys want to kind of go into how it gets, how you set it up? Anybody interested in? I don't want to waste people's time. <laughs> all right, cool. Uh, Robin is interested. Let's let's go for it. Uh, so, setup is really straightforward. You just download the tar, basically, unzip it, and run a single command. Um, proof of concepts can be put together in less than an hour or two, and this is an honest truth. It's very simple to set up a basic log stash configuration that's pulling your log data from MySQL and Apache and whatever other things you're running and pumping them through tools that I don't understand fully, like system D or whatever. And, uh, <laughs> uh, and then pushing them into Elasticsearch and then showing you the data on Kibana in bright, beautiful colors with charts that you can search and then you can email to your boss. So proof of concepts, hour or two, really simple. Um, for bigger clusters, there's more of an intense setup. It requires a bit more awareness of all the different knobs and uh, controls that are under the hood. So it's generally a good idea to read the docs, read the manual, and probably attend a training because there's a lot of knobs. And uh, then finally, there are non-ELK software, P 
pieces, components, that will add value to a system like Redis, where a good logging use case specifically will have Redis in between the key components, making sure that things don't get lost as they're transitioning between uh, things going down your ingestion pipeline. So manual in installation methods include downloading the tarballs, like I mentioned. Uh, those are available at elasticsearch.org slash elk downloads, slash overview slash elk downloads. Installing Linux packages via deb or RPM, or you can pull it down from Git. Uh, most recent updates, obviously, but not quite as nice as you know just installing the installable. And then there's Quilk, Quick Elk, which was set up by a guy who works at Elasticsearch named Kurt, and uh, it is basically a script that you can run to install all these components and get them set up with a basic like use case in one command. Uh, I would recommend checking it out if you're interested. Uh, the link is up here, and I believe we should be able to provide the slides afterwards if you guys are interested in that. We've got configuration management information here. I can't really speak to a whole lot of this, but uh, there are Puppet modules that exist for managing Elasticsearch, uh, as well as the rest of the Elk stack, including Logstash and Kibana. Although Kibana is a completely browser-based application, doesn't really need a whole lot of management. Um, a Chef cookbook. There are Docker and Salt Stack and Ansible component setup things. Going to production. <laughs> Excuse me. Like I said, I'm not a sysadmin. Uh, the slides were from uh, somebody who can speak more to this stuff. I, I apologize. But access control and security is something that you can accomplish in Elasticsearch using the Shield plugin that we offer, uh, or by putting another application in front of Elasticsearch that basically prevents other people from accessing it firewall style. Um, uh, Nginx or Apache are common, uh, common tools for this job because every, all communication with Elasticsearch is over HTTP, so a server with a decent support for um, you know, filtering out requests should do the job just fine. Like I said, there's a Shield plugin, which provides uh, role-based access controls and uh, integration with authentication systems like LDAP, Active Directory. Uh, the main reason why I'm here is because I work on Kibana. And <laughs> today we released RC1 of Kibana 4. Um, the Kibana, 4, Kibana product project has been evolving over time and uh, went from kind of a modest beginning where it was really just a search bar and a list of documents to a more advanced visualization front end, like builder, visualization builder thing uh, in Kibana 3. And if you've seen it, it's very pretty, but can be a bit difficult to use. Um, Kibana 4 is a, is a different beast entirely. And so what, what I'm showing you right here is, is Kibana 4. And these, what, what we're looking at is the screen that we call Discover. Um, on the left-hand side, you can see a list of the fields that I have available inside of the documents inside of Elasticsearch. Uh, and then in the middle here, you can see the actual documents themselves. And each one of these documents is a web request that went through, I believe, an Apache server and was logged to systemd. And then systemd was, uh, then Logstash was listening to systemd, taking those messages, parsing out the useful bits, IP address and the method and the content length of the response and the URL and all that good stuff, and then turning them into JSON objects, which are then stored in Elasticsearch. So what we're looking at here is somewhere around so these, these buckets are done per 30 minutes. So we're looking somewhere between 600 events, per, 600 requests per 30 minutes down to the you know, 62 events per 30 minutes sec, uh, range. And these are growing over time because the generator is currently running in the background. Um, yeah, so Logstash takes these, these log messages that Apache generates and parses them into usable objects, which you can then visualize inside of Kibana. Uh, you can see here we have things like geodest. This is the location that the request was headed towards. Uh, geo coordinates are the coordinates of the user that made the request. We can take those and then turn them into points on a map, or we can group them together into areas on a map and see hot spots on side of a map on a map to see like where all of our requests are coming from. Uh, we have information about the host that the request is made towards. So if you're running a larger site, you might have tens of hosts, thir you know, 30 or so hosts for different CDNs and whatnot. And you can group things by that and group again inside of those. And really, by taking these logs and parsing out the really important bits, you can, you can utilize them a bit, a bit better. Um, 
But to, to give more detail on just this screen specifically, up here at the top we've got a search bar. And inside the search bar you can just search for something. So let's search for PHP. And you'll see that it's going to Elasticsearch and finding all the, the documents or the log files that mention PHP. Um, does a little bit of highlighting down here, shows you that the extension in this request is PHP specifically. And I could see that there's a lot more things going on over here. So that seems kind of normal, but there was a very, very small amount of traffic here. So I'm just going to brush over this area, zoom into that time frame, and look at just the documents that are happening right there. You can see, uh, not really sure what's going on here. This is just kind of like a blob of fields. So I'm going to add some columns to look at. Okay, these are all going to the Academy of Performing Arts and Science org. And apparently our requests for PHP files, because I know that's right, I filtered by PHP. I'm going to remove that. Look at all of the requests that came in. Then I'm going to grab another field, which is extension. So I can see now the different extension for the requests that are coming in. Lots of JPEG requests. Cool. Well, this is interesting data, so I'm just going to save this search. And I'm going to call it my you know, Apache logs. Cool. So now I've saved this this search. And really, it's just a scoped view <coughs> of my log data. Uh, then I'm going to move on to the next step, which is up here in the top bar. You've got Discover, and then you've got Visualize. What Visualize does is it lets you take a search that you've picked up, you've uh, formulated over here in Discover, and then turn it into a visualization, which is really the fun part. So here we are. You can see I have a visualization that was I had ready made using the same uh, data that I just scoped out over there on the left in the previous application. Uh, this is showing on the x-axis the timestamp. So these, bu these bars over here are representative of different points or groups of periods of time. If you hover over them, you can see these are five minute periods of time. And then inside those bars are little segments. And those segments are representative of the geo.source, so the source country for each of these requests. Neat. Lots of pretty colors, but let's just make it a little bit simpler and, and do the colors based on extension. And the extension is, you know, HTML, CSS, whatever. Okie doke. I'm going to go ahead and turn the legend back on so we can see what's going on over here. We've got some JPEG, some CSS requests, PNG, PHP, and JIF requests. Let's go ahead and save that. These are our request count. Oops. By extension. Okay, I'm going to do one more visualization real quick. Uh, click the start from scratch button, and I'm going to. This time I'm going to do a uh, pie chart to show which hosts are getting the most traffic. All right, I'm going to start with my index pattern, which is a uh, way to specify which documents. Like it's kind of like a database name in MySQL, if you're familiar with that. Um, all right, so I've started off with a, a blank pie chart. I'm going to go ahead and add a, something over here, which is called a bucket aggregation. You can see it's in this buckets section. And I'm going to add a bucket type of split slices. So I want to take the pie, and I want to split it into slices. I'm going to do that using something called a terms aggregation. And that just takes a field and finds all the terms in that field and uses those to create a single bucket per term. Let's see, what can I, what do I want to do? Host. So what I'm looking at now is I'm looking at the top five hosts uh, based on the count of hits inside that host. So when I click apply, you'll see that it splits out by these hosts. And I've got this information for ever, I guess, I mean, for the current time window, which is up there in the top right hand side. Requests by host. I'm not good at typing requests, apparently. All right, cool. Dashboard. So I'm going to throw a couple of these things on my dashboard. So you can see that I have these visualizations, which are tracking the current information based on these, this time filter I have up top, and provide me with the number of requests by extension and the requests by host. I'm going to actually change my time filter to just the last 15 minutes. A little bit smaller, um, and yeah, you get to see just in the last 15 minutes. It looks like we've got 
some requests that came through for P for lots of lots of JPEGs. I guess we have a very very rich website, with lots and lots of images, and uh, yeah. So this is Kibana. Um, it's great for helping you find and solve problems primarily. Unfortunately, I don't have a data set that will help me exemplify like what solving a problem with Kibana would look like. But so, question, so question. obviously everything's running on your laptop in this particular case. Correct. Let's say we had your had your L set up elsewhere, mm -hmm. and you're running this. Kibana is all JavaScript. So does that mean that you've basically on your browser sucked in all the data, <coughs> and then you're running local JavaScript to do all the manipulation? that you're, you're looking at, or is something happening on the back end as well? Um, the server that we have for Kibana is basically just a proxy. It's, it's designed specifically to allow the Kibana front end to ask Elasticsearch for data without you having to expose Elasticsearch to the, to the world. Um, to answer your question, though, the, the, the most, most of this work is being done in Elasticsearch itself. It responds with JSON data that's totally suitable for creating these visualizations. And you can actually see it if you want to take a look. I can show you what one of these responses will look like. It's a bit nasty and verbose. But really, this is the raw Elasticsearch response that came back that we turned and manipulated <coughs> into this chart. We've got information about you know this specific time. We had a PNG of a dot count one and CSS, a dot count one. So it, it takes care of this bucketing and stuff like that naturally using the aggregations framework. And with Kibana, you can kind of learn how to make these aggregations and then utilize them in your own application. Uh, you might use aggregations to do something like the sidebar in Amazon. Faceting is often used to do this, but aggregations are a bit more intensive and you can nest them inside of each other, which is pretty cool. But yeah, so this is most of the work is being done at a, the Elasticsearch level, and, and very little of it is being done in the browser itself okay. intentionally. Yeah. Is there anything in the either combined or separate roadmaps for Elasticsearch and Kibana to have a real-time streaming interface where I can maybe have web sockets to pull percolated matches in real time? But Did you say web that? sockets? <laughs> web sockets, yes. Uh, so roadmap, I would have to say no. Um, do we want to do that? Absolutely. Uh, whether or not it's it's not a top priority as of right now, we do have a like live refresh. Thing that so like every you know five seconds it can automatically refresh. It's not it's not live. It's not pulling via web sockets. It's definitely re-executing the qu the query every five seconds, which is less than ideal. But um, but until Kibana four, we didn't even have a server. In Kibana three, if you guys aren't familiar, it was really just a directory of HTML and JavaScript files that you'd plug into Apache and then serve. Um, but we are running a Node.js backend now that theoretically, in time, could provide us with WebSocket streaming. We just haven't nailed that down yet or put it on the roadmap. Any other questions? Yes. Do you have like a, a dashboard mode so you could just put it on a monitor? Yeah. Sort of a. So this dashboard right here is, is neat for playing around with. You know, it's got this, this, this search bar at the top. Um, but you can also uh, click the share button. And we have right here an embed version of the dashboard, which you can embed into another web page via an iframe. Or you can copy this little HTTP, HTML, excuse me, whatever this thing is called, source URL. Drop it in the URL bar. And you can see what it would look like on a like wall at, in your office. So this is what it would essentially look like. You know, it's just these charts, and they will automatically update every five seconds. And I think the actually the automatically updating part was uh, turned off. But yeah. So that's what that's essentially how you'd do it. You'd grab the uh, URL. You can add a query string parameter that drops the uh, the Chrome from the application itself, and then put it up on a flat screen, just running in a web browser. Because you you had the embedded uh, visualization like in your new tab. Which is a nice example. Of oh yeah, yeah. So um, this is actually my personal version of Chrome, but here is my work version of Chrome, and you can see in my work version of Chrome, I've got you know Echo JS because I love JavaScript and Hacker News, but I've also got a little Kibana chart here on the left, which at this resolution is not is barely legible, but um, at full resolution, it's it's actually a live version of a chart embedded in my new tab page. 
So every single time I go to click a new tab, I can see live data, like aggregated and ready to go right there for me. If I was a sysadmin, I would probably find that useful. For now, it's really just test data, so. Does the, I don't know what part would do it, but would it work with uh, IAS box? Yeah, sure. Uh, the, the server right now is a, is a Node.js server, and the Node.js server does need to run. But IIS could theoretically, um, I'd imagine, uh, proxy the requests from the front end to that Node.js server running behind the IIS. So as long as I can digest web logs. Oh, logs you mean the, the, the web logs? It'll, it'll still read them and make pretty far Yeah, so with Logstash, you can definitely consume nearly any log format. And if you can't do it today, you could write the, it, it's, it's basically a, a readable version of reg regular expressions to parse out the useful bits from the log messages. And so yes, IIS is definitely supported. Microsoft uses the Logstash product and Elasticsearch to, for, for log analysis in the Azure cloud. So. Does it, other than log formats, does it consume anything else uh, like XMMP, XMPP or anything like that? I'm not sure if Logstash has an XMPP input, but Logstash will consume nearly anything that's text-based. So if you could put it into a text file or if you can send it over UDP to Logstash, then I, I imagine that would work for just fine. And it but it prefers JSON. It will turn everything into JSON on the output side before it puts it into Elasticsearch. It will turn it into JSON. So when we're searching for it, we search for it at Elasticsearch. And all documents inside of Elasticsearch are JSON. So at some point, primary, or usually used during inside log, Logstash, the, the original data format will be converted into a JSON structure and then stored that way. Other questions? I know if people are, are throwing IRC logs in the Elasticsearch. Yeah. Oh, so OK. Yeah. Same thing, essentially. Anything with properties. You know, you, you know who's, who's sending it. That's a username property. Or the message is a property, that kind of stuff. And then with Elasticsearch, you'll have full text search available. So you could search through the messages of every message that's going through your, your server and see them right here in Discover find the stuff that you want to look at specifically. Really up your keyboarding like this. <laughs> Someone has written a filter for XMPP or Jabber. See, there we go. Great. Great community around Logstash. Lots and lots of inputs and outputs available. Uh, Elasticsearch is not the only output, by the way. You can output to Graphite. You can output to Hadoop. You can output to all sorts of different things, even just flat file, if you prefer. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.